Now, say my name. The Rolling Bad Podcast. You're goddamn right. Coming to you mostly live from our lonely desert studio in Rio Rancho, New Mexico, it's the Rolling Bad Podcast, episode number 85. It's March 1st, and I'm your host, oh, God damn it. hostess, oh, God. I should have known you were going to do something like that. Yeah. Should have known. I, you know, you said you wanted a teleprompter <laughs> for the surprises. Yeah. So he's Elric Edge. I'm Bill Costello. How are you folks? Yeah, well, I'd imagine they're doing all right. <laughs> God. All right. All right. So I'm still not very good at this, but it's all right. We'll get there eventually. Another 85 shows. Yeah. Let me take a quick break here. Right off the top, immediately into a break. Because the wife just called. Well, we've earned it. Yeah. As part of our intro, and sorry for that quick break we took to scarf down some Arby's food. Yep. We, we have, have the meats. What? Yeah, we did. We had the meats. Uh, but we do want to throw a shout out to someone who isn't scarfing down Arby's probably. Um, Dave Wojtek from Garage <laughs> Hammer. Yeah. He posted a picture the other day. Damn. He's looking good. He he's is. losing the weight. Looking real good. Yep. So keep it going, Dave. Good luck to you and good on you, man. Yeah, definitely. Well done, sir. That is not a not an easy task. No, not at all. Uh, a couple of events we're going to shout out. Um, I have the initial view of the Basement Wargamers Summer Slaughter. It's going to be this year, July 18th and 19th, at the Greater Philadelphia Convention Center again. Um, it's going to be ITC events for 40K, AOS, X-Wing, and some other events as well. They have a 50-player AOS event, so it rings in at about $70 per person, but you get stuff with that. and. I have the Facebook feed for, but if you just search for Summer Slaughter or Basement Wargamers, you'll get the link to it. But I'll also put the link in the show notes. So that's pretty cool. They're doing it again, and hopefully we'll get Sean or one of the guys on to talk about that in person. Yeah. And later on today, we're actually going to have uh, we're going to have Tom come in and talk to us about. The Mortal March out in Arizona, so I won't cover the details of that. He'll probably cover all the good details, but it's a GT going on in Arizona uh, at the Arizona Game Fair. Dun, dun, dun. It's a 40-man, 40, 40 seats. Uh, this one's only 5 bucks, uh, but you also need a Arizona Game Fair badge for both days, and we'll post up the link to where you get the badges at. So I don't know what the full price is. When we talk to Tom, he'll tell us. Yeah. All the deets on that. So those are just some of the events that are going on that we have been asked to shout out, and therefore we'll do so. Indeed. Yeah, it's what we do. Also, Duncan Rhodes has Yay. created his own channel. He's since he's separated from Games Workshop right. back in December. just before Christmas. Yeah. yeah, like a couple of days before Christmas, I remember that. And apparently... He and a buddy who does a lot of video editing and whatnot are going to make a painting YouTube thing as well as a website yep. and all of that. Uh, and that's going to be his full-time gig. Yeah. Is painting and showing people how to do that. So, Which is actually kind of, I mean, I like I like seeing that and he'll have more freedom. You know, it's like we were presupposing back then. He probably has more freedom now because... He's really into a whole bunch of different games. He loves bolt yeah. action, and you know you you really can't show that stuff when you're the the flag waver for Games Workshop. Yeah, you can't even post it to your own yeah Twitter his own Twitter feed and stuff like that, which sucks. So yeah, he plays uh, War Machine, yeah. and Jesus, yeah. uh, he's really and I think he said his favorite is the Napoleonic, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. So, he loves the historical stuff. So. God, man, that dude has a ton of yeah, of very nicely painted stuff yeah so i can't wait but he he's put out two teaser videos so far yeah he's got over twenty thousand followers on youtube yeah from teaser videos Not so bad. all those other youtube creators are like i can't get 10 freaking viewers with all my good con co yeah. content and he gets 20 grand get duncan as your hype man uh yeah well yeah and be a proven commodity well yeah, that might help one. you know 
I'm pretty sure, you know, yeah, Lady Gaga probably went on Twitter and had 10 million followers overnight. So yeah. this is how it happens. So Duncan is the Lady Gaga of 40 tabletop gaming? Yeah, um, okay, uh, fair miniatures enough. gaming, sure. Sure, all right. Wow. If he comes out in a meat dress, I'm, <laughs> I'm unsubscribing <laughs> right away. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, he would never do that. Maybe. Maybe. In the happy good news department, we actually had the Warhammer Rio Rancho second anniversary yep. event yesterday. Store is two years old. Yeah, and that's pretty darn cool. Yeah. Anders once again spent uh spared no expense. Yep. So cupcakes and donuts for everyone. Yay. And of course, all kinds of little things going on. You know, you could get the uh, exclusive store anniversary items with the two characters, which, you know, I ordered one of each. I'm sure you did, too. Yep. And um, what else? They had the backpack and the tin. Art and prints. The art prints. The Black Library the stuff. Black Library books. Happened to be on the same weekend. Yeah, the Black Library 2020 celebration. Yep. So I'm so glad they brought out that Sabat World map because I missed it the first time around. Oh, yeah. And I think I was in, I was traveling that weekend and I couldn't get a good connection, but I was able to order it yesterday. So I'm jazzed. Nice. The Lionel Johnson book, the Primark book, limited editions coming out. Yeah, I wanted to get the dice and the pens. Yeah. Yeah, those. Oh, the Legion pens. Yeah. yeah, those went real fast. <clears throat> yeah, stuff like that always does. Mm hmm. So I managed to get the Legion pens. I did order the dice, I think. Dang, I'm pretty sure I did. But, yeah, I mean, a lot of great – it was just basically a great time, you know. People were trying to hit the different spending levels to get the free toys, you know, yeah. whichever one they wanted. I think everybody was shooting for them. The backpack is actually really nice this time. Yeah, it is. And it actually, like, will fit a codex. It's a genuine backpack sized. And I think he was saying that it was designed to fit a skirmish case. Yes. So it'll fit books, dice – and the base of it, in the bottom of the bag, it will fit the smaller. There's the Crusader, which is the big. That's the big one. The right. skirmish case is the little one. Yeah, the skirmish case will fit in the bottom of mm -hmm. it. And then I think some stuff will fit on top of it. Oh, too. yeah, most likely. Yeah, it's a it's a good size bag. So, yeah, it's a lot better than those bags from last year, which you thought might have been, you know, over-the-shoulder messenger bags, but were not big enough to hold a large bottle of water. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, I didn't. I don't remember those. But yeah, they were small. They were real small. I mean, I'm. They're good for day tripping and what have you. But you can't yeah. carry game gear in them. I still got my old apocalypse one, man. Yeah. Oh, the man. old brown one. You could fit yep. the uh, the old case in. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Yeah, I don't even make that stuff anymore. No, not at all. So, and also as part of the intro. I think we we are obligated to cover. The big event that happened during the week. Rest in peace, Space Marines. <laughs> yeah. You're all dead. Burn your armies. Yep. Burn your Leviathan Dreadnoughts. Yep. This is, uh, I mean, how dare Games Workshop do this kind of stuff to their players? You to know? fix the game so that other people can have fun, too. Yep. And didn't, I didn't yeah. see that coming. And yeah. they invalidated all my stuff that I spent money on. And I'm really upset. And I hate this company. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Good okay, Lord. so thank God they came out and issued a fact for the Space Marines yep. as a group. They haven't hit the in well. I mean, they've already hit the individual supplements with changes here and there, but this is a pretty big change. It, it changes the doctrines and how the doctrines progress through the turns. And to me, this is a change for the better. I mean, it does it. it it does hurt the Iron Hands. Oh, well. Get yeah. over yourselves. I'm sure they'll be all right. Um, yeah, they'll they'll be fine. They're Don't still really worry. good. Yeah, incredibly. Vastly good. So, but basically the way it is now, the combat doctrines, you are in the, what's his name, doctrine? The tactical. Tactical or... doctrine on turn one. And then on turn two, you immediately progress to assault. For turn three, you can choose to stay in assault or move it to devastator. And then from turn four on, you're in devastator. That's it. Or no, that backwards. Yeah, I think you always Strike end that, with assault. Reverse it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's devastator that you go into on turn two. Yeah. And then, you know, and it, it does it's a nerf to iron hands because they no longer just get to sit in devastator. Yeah. 
and and just be that thing that is a negative play experience for everyone else. Yeah, same thing with the Raven Guard. Got yeah. a bit of a hit too. Yeah. So well, if, if, uh, yeah. Raven Guard can still do their tricks. It's just not. You have to wait till turn two. Yeah. So, go figure. Yeah. It, yeah. It helps negate the alpha strike. Yeah. So if you're in AOS and you're like, well, I don't understand what any of this stuff means. It's all nonsense to me. Imagine Idenet Deepkin with their tide system being able to pick the tide, the one tide they want, and then just leave it on that and leave it there the yeah. whole game. Mm-hmm. So my entire army always fights first. I don't even have to roll for yeah. it like Slanash. It just right. happens. Imagine Deepkin having that every turn. Yeah, that would be what Iron Hands were basically doing in yeah. 40k. <laughs> And the idea, you know, there's two veins of thought. The idea that that got through playtest without someone noticing it was bad. Right. Yeah, okay, I can I can say that you could knock on the company for that. But the flip side, all those people out there that thought this was going to be the way of things going forward, once again, yeah. thinking that a dirty trick that made for a negative play experience for other people was going to last and you bought and purchased armies around that little dirty trick. I don't I don't feel bad for you even in a little bit. Nope. Not one bit. Well, well. So, yeah, if you're that guy, consider trying to not be that guy anymore, and you'll probably gain more friends. It'll be fun. Friends are cool. Are they, though? No, not really. I don't no. have any, and it's fine. Totally Just overhyped. Fine. Yeah, I, I think so. Two out of seven would not recommend. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> that was the Space Marine fact. That was the the big divisive news from the community for the week. Yeah, I was telling Anders that, uh, or no, I was telling Josh at the store that my hands were getting kind of cold, so I just opened up Twitter and I let the bonfire that is the, <laughs> the internet post FAQ <laughs> kind of warm me up. I do love the people that are posting those, mm. you know, rip RIP Space Marines. Yeah. And, you know, you really think it's going to just knock them back down to the lowest tables, and I'm like, yeah. yeah, you obviously don't know how to read a book. No. So. Ho hum. So sad. Uh, what else did were we going to cover in the introductions that we said we were going to add to the introduction and then forgot? Oh, the uh, one of the things that Anders was doing over at the store was the blind bag. Oh yeah, painting competition. So basically, he put together all these blind bags, just paper bags, stapled at the top with a model, something from the current range inside there. And he would just move the price from the box to the outside of the paper bag, and you bought whatever price range you wanted, but you didn't know what it was. And we have from now until, what, April 24th? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, it's toward the end of April to paint it up. And he also tossed another model in there yeah, as kind of a freebie, and you have to use that other model. And it's something little. It's not, you know... Yeah. A crisis battle suit or something. But um, it's something small, and you you have to use that either as a, you know, in a fight scene or as something on the base or what have you, whatever you want to do. Some kind of mini diorama type yeah. thing. And then you submit them all by April 20th, 5th, 20th, yeah. something. Something and, in there. <laughs> he's going to kill me. I know he is. Because he only <laughs> repeated it like 400 times yeah. yesterday. So, and I could actually just hit the Facebook and no, but, you know, it's more fun to do it this way. Yeah. So, but yeah, we'll see how that contest goes. I'm I'm interested to see, I don't know how many bags he had. I think he said 32. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a lot. He yeah. kept He kept making more as the day went on. So, yeah, and they're, they were all gone. I think he had like one or two left today. Yeah. I'm interested to see how many come back to the store on that date to be judged. Yeah, we'll see. So, yeah. I I ended up with a XV-88 broadside battle suit from the Tau Empire. Yeah. Which... <laughs> the first step down the road to the greater good. It has skewed my thinking because, of course, last night, what did I have to do? Well, I have to research Tau color schemes. And so I had to read the Tau book. Yep. yep. And I had to go... Those are some really, really cool models. They are. And the thing is, is you can't, I mean, having one broadside is ridiculous. You need at least three. Yeah. Maybe nine. Yeah. 
Yeah. And some riptides. And some riptides. Obviously a sea of fire warriors. Yeah. Oh, uh, crisis suits. And... Thank God there's a getting started box. <laughs> I am such a loser because uh, I'm also looking at that XV-128 Storm Surge. Yeah, oh, yeah. That is such a beautiful model. So cool. If You know, I, I think it's one of those things. If the Tau aesthetic hits you, you love it. Yeah. If it doesn't hit you, you're never going to – it's never going to appeal to you because it is very distinct. Yeah. It's like Necrons. You either really like that aesthetic or you really don't. Yep. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I uh, I hate I hate him for what he's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a work mega boss. Wow, how convenient! Oh, wow, Bill. Yeah, <laughs> on foot, and then the second yeah. little bit that I got was a, a mirror morn banshee. So I have to oh, try nice. to figure out how to get a mirror morn banshee onto a base with a war boss. Oh, that'll be, that should be kind of fun. We could make some up. Yeah, I'll figure that'll, it out. That'll be a cool little fight, I think. Should be good. Yeah, we can do this. We got this. So, yeah, we have to make up some some things. Oh, and uh, I'm sorry, more intro. Oh? But we posted pictures today. Yeah, we did. From the Demon Challenge. Yep, the Greater Demon Challenge. Yeah, you did the Lord of Change, and yours is work in progress, and yeah. yours is looking awesome. Yeah, it's all right. It's actually, it's Cairo's Fate Weaver. So. Yeah, it's Fate Weaver. And that's a pretty involved model, so I don't, I, we didn't set a time limit. We didn't say by the next show. Right. So that ain't nothing but a thing. So. Yeah, um, he's, a, he's a little more detailed than I thought. Yeah. He was. And, <laughs> but I swear to God, those wings and the body, they're beautiful. The wings, the blend on the wings is just gorgeous. There's pictures up on our Facebook page of. Right now, it works a lot of change as a work in progress. I finished my Bloodthirster. Yeah. Those pictures are up there. I, I'll tell you what. They are looking. I know Chad is done. He ended up going with Bloab Rot Spawn. Yeah, because uh, he done. already had his three great right. unclean ones. And so on the show, he said he was going to do the Glotkin. Then he got home, could not find his Glotkin. Right. He's like, well, I have a Bloab. And I was like, well, that... That's a great big old Nurgle monster mm -hmm. character, so yeah, that that'll counts. work. Yep. And he, he cranked that bad boy out in like two days or something. Yeah, he had it done over the course of a couple of nights. So, <clears throat> yeah. so I, he's really in love with those contrast paints, I yeah. tell you. And the, they do a great job. As We were looking at Josh's guardsmen today. I oh, mean, they're yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And his sister's, that tank is it's primo. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's with that. And then actually, Andrews, did you see his corn demons? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he cranked out a whole corn demon army with contrast in, what did he say, like 11 hours? Yeah, something. He did a start collecting box and a bloodthirster. Yeah. From in shrink wrap to painted on the table. Yeah. In 11 hours. 11 hours. Yep. So, oh, and uh, five flesh hounds, I think, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that was part of the deal yesterday was uh, for the event, I brought my Chaos Dreadhold over to the store. Oh, yeah. And then Josh and I, we set up Josh's Flesh Eater Quartz as one of the attackers and Andrew's Stormcast as the other side of the attackers. And then we used Andrew's 45,000 points of corn uh, to be the defenders. And we just set up a nice display and grab, put pictures up. And so they're on the Warhammer Rio Rancho store page. Yeah. So looks good. Yeah, it was all great stuff, I tell you. So is that it for the intro or are we going to keep going back? No, I, I I think that's good. <laughs> Jump into the new dawn. Okay, so the new dawn is phenomenal. So first up, not in the GW environment, uh, Cubicle Seven posted up two updates for AOS Soulbound this week. The first one was talking about how the combat system was going to work, and then the second one was their uh, map of the Great Parch, which is where you know the, I guess their part of the show is going to take place. Great to see that they're actually engaging because there has been so little news for so long that yeah. it's actually nice to get some dribbles here and there. You know? <laughs> like they, they have like Mortal Realms Monday or yeah. something like that. I'm like, uh, been a while since yeah. we had a Monday <laughs> with any Mortal Realms stuff on there, guys. But okay. <laughs> You mean more like Morrowind Monday? Yeah. You ain't talking about this. So, yeah. Exactly. 
But yeah, there was two updates last week, or you know, recently. So hopefully that thing's coming along. I hope so. so. I'm oh, very yeah. excited about it. You and me both. I think we kind of already hit the pre-orders for this week. Most of it was Black Library stuff. You know, the Sabat Worlds map, the Lionel Johnson book, the Black Library Weekender Dice. Uh, the Talons of the Emperor kit, which is uh, Valerian and Alea. Yeah. So Alea is the sister of silence. Of course, Valerian is Valerian. And you buy you when you put them on the table, it's a unit of a two. Like you bring both of them. Oh, they are. Yeah, they are a, so a thing. Is how they how they work, and then they operate independently. Wow, that's going to make him just yeah. Because She's... with her being a psychic null and a sister of silence, yeah. You're not going to hit him with none of that zinchi and poo poo. So, <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you didn't get your hands on them over this weekend, I was told that they'll be available again in a few months. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that kit, I did not get them. There was a yeah, limited number in store, and then I completely spaced ordering them. Yeah. So, but I will get them when they come back around. Also, the regular pre orders from Games Workshop are all 40K, but it's kind of the, uh, Blood of the Phoenix box broken down a little bit, so you you can now order Jane Czar as a model, which is the Howling Banshee Exarch, uh, Drazar, which is the in, the big Incubi, Dark Eldar, and then of course you can order the Howling Banshee kit, plastic Howling Banshees, and the Incubi from yeah, all the good stuff, Girls. all the toys. Those are those are some sweet kits. The Janes are and the Drezar models are yeah, wow. Something else, you know, it's it's that same kind of thing that we look at with like the pointy elves that we've seen so far and all that stuff. We're we're just looking at these models, going, oh my god! And it's the same thing for the forty k crowd. These are models that everybody looks at and just goes, boy, if this is the future, I am so down. Yep, I'm excited. And then the big news from earlier today. Announcing what the pre-orders for next week will be. Yep. Looks like new Black Library books. <laughs> Why do you have to take my fun away? Why do you have well, to You're not excited about the dreams? new Black Library books? <laughs> I am. I am oh. truly excited for them. Okay, good. So, yeah, that's what's uh, going up on pre-order next week. And you forgot then... about Start Collecting Gloom Spike Gets. Oh, yeah. And Start Collecting Daughters of Cain. Yeah. Which, from what I understand, is just the cauldron and... Five canary. Or not canary. Uh, five of the snake ladies. Yeah. They're called. Lucy or something. Expensive box. But, I mean, those are pieces you're going to want. Those are definitely things you're going to want to put in your army. Well, yeah, the cauldron is, like, the only way to get the hero models. Other right. than Marathi, apparently, so... Yep. And, of course, since Elric wants to be a poo-poo head... What did I do? He doesn't get to be a dreamer. They announced the Seraphon book will go up for pre-order next weekend. Who? Stop. There will be the regular edition. There will be a collector's edition codec or battle tome, which if you ask me, when was the last time they did a collector's edition battle tome? For what? Seraphon, you. (laughs) (laughs) We're still dealing with Seraphon? I would move past that. <laughs> You're just sore because Iron Jaws didn't get nothing new. Yeah, well. Uh, and, of course, they're going to get that monster terrain piece, which is actually seems to be really tall, really big. And, of course, there's going to be cards. Thank God. Yeah. And I just cannot wait to see. I actually have to force myself this week to stay off social media and all the different sites because I don't want to hear them talking their you-know-what about the book before they ever do anything with it. Yeah. So I'm getting really tired. Two of weeks that. to go. Yeah. And you know this is the week where they're gonna start I don't know if the embargo list lifts this week or when you can order it. But at least starting Saturday there's gonna be no end of Wow, well, this book sucks because Yeah. And I'm just so over that because the same people that were talking about the books that suck now are like, well, after playing it a couple times, it's the greatest book they've ever put out. <laughs> All right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So next week, the pre-orders will go up for the train piece, the cards, and the book, the limited edition book. And the regular. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, the, pre, the pre-orders the pre will go up for 
all the new Saurus, the new Skinks, the new Saurus Cav, the new, oh, that's right, they didn't redo any of the models. You know. Fine cast Croxagors and Salamanders, get out of here. Those of us who know how to live the dream <laughs> ignore you because you're <laughs> just, you're just not. I'm right. just saying, you know. I am so so depressed with you right now. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's going to be weeks and weeks of sweet new Seraphon release. Oh no, yeah, no, no, just a book. It'll be interesting to see in this book if things like the Astrolith Bearer, all those things that you can only get in fine cast, are kind of downplayed in favor of like the plastic skink star priest and you know the ones that you can get in plastic. I don't know. It's not like that with Skaven. I know Gisales are hot. Yeah, you know, a lot of that stuff. I, I, I just don't get it. I think one of the things that they look at is so many people have Seraphon armies, and the the models exist out there. It's not like you cannot find these things; right. they're out there. It's not like you know this is a twenty five year old model that no one sells anymore. Sure, but. I think we both know that Games Workshop is a super evil company that's just trying to take all your money. Right. So why wouldn't they just invalidate your entire collection and make you start over from scratch? Oh, see like, our Reapers! I'm sorry, Tomb Kings players. Ooh. Oh, he said it again. <laughs> he said it out loud. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. A lot of people like to think that they do that. But then here we are with two books. Yeah. Three books, actually, because... Skaven, Seraphon, and Cities of Sigmar embraced yeah. some pretty old, old models. models. Yeah. But. Yeah, and honestly, if you wanted to just join the game right now and you picked up only Cities of Sigmar book, you would be hard-pressed to find a lot of the units in there. You would be doing the email They're right thing. there on the pages. Oh, God. That's where you find them. They got pictures in there, too, in case you're wondering. <laughs> Why isn't Chad here? <laughs> I miss Chad. No, you don't. Uh, you're right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, I got to dig at him. He's the one that yeah. bailed on us. Right. So, Well, it's not that you have to go to eBay. It's that all that stuff is available for Cities of Sigmar. It's just all direct only. So you well, get it directly from Games Workshop. Exactly. Yeah. Which is. Well, there's still some things that you can. Can you get the Luminarch? And... No. Yeah, you can. You can get the. Uh, the only Cities of Sigmar stuff that is carried in the stores is the gr Getting Started Greywater Fastness. Right. And, and Anvil Guard. Anvil Guard. Right. Yeah. But you can still pick up the Celestial Hurricanum and the. Sure, but you got to order You have direct. to order them direct. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. All that stuff. All the Dread Spears and everything. All that stuff is available from Games Workshop. It's just, you don't really want your store to have to carry well, another 60 SKUs of. You know, some of that stuff. Stuff like that won't 15 move. 15 years old. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting having, you know, a Warhammer store here in town. And you can actually kind of look at really what they look at stocking. And, you know, it's it's troops, choices, and or, you know, battle line, as well as some of the really big time required, almost, you know, must have elite choices or, or you know, and units. The centerpiece model. And then the big... The big bosses, the big yeah. stuff, plus getting starter boxes. They really don't have the physical room. I would hate to see a store, you know, obviously Warhammer and the Citadel that carry yeah. everything in the lines. But say, can you imagine what that would be like for a one-man store to try to manage and maintain? Yeah. He'd probably want to kill himself all the time. Well, I'd imagine that goes with the job anyways. But Yeah. <laughs> all the neckbeards that walk in and oh, the smelly people brutal. that walk in and... I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he maintains a good I don't know how any game attitude. store owner does it. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, like, the Warhammer thing, at least you're only with Warhammer nerds. Yeah. Regular brick-and-mortar store, you got to deal with you magic You have to deal with players. everybody, magic oh, and Pokemon. D&D guys. That D&D &D guy that comes in, he wants to tell you about oh, God. his character. Oh, bless. I, I could hate level it. fighter. And he was, oh, God, it was all my agent. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah, and can you, you know, when you're running a game store and you're looking at one day you're going to have a Pokemon tournament where a lot of your players are going to be kids. They're going to be in that 10, 12, maybe 8 range. Yeah. And yet you still have your normal neckbeards that come in and, you know. <laughs> Just so they can crush a 12-year-old. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what they say, if you want to make a small fortune in a game store, just start with a large one. 
So, <laughs> God, that was painfully accurate. It's true. I mean, uh, but you know, honestly, the difference between like a Warhammer store and a game store, at least for the Warhammer store, you're never worried about what you're stocking. You don't have to think about it. It's what they send you. And, you know, I'm sure they have some leeway in what they order, but you're basically going to be handed what you have to sell. And, you know, like Ender says, he's not so much of a retail guy as he is a tutorial guy. He's a teacher. He you teaches know, the game. He teaches the painting. Yeah. The product sells itself. Another massive benefit of just of doing what he does as opposed to, or well, doing what a, a games workshop manager does as opposed to a regular game store is you're always paid the same. I mean, like you get bonuses, you know, sure. based off if you generate tons of sales or whatever. Whereas right. When it's your own store and your own product that you're trying to push, you know, and something happens like, oh, my Flames of War group just disappeared. Yeah. And now I have all this stock still on the shelves. It's never going to move. Guess I'm eating ramen all next month. I mean, yeah, look at it. If you're the guy that bought in big to War Machine. Yeah. And look. AT-43. How... Oh, yeah. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> stuff that just flopped oh, and that, died. Uh, the one that the store here did. Um Drop Fleet Commander. Yeah. Drop Zone oh, Commander. God, yes. Tons of that stuff. And oh, my God. Womp, womp. And the thing is, it's a great game. Sure. They just went through a string of bad events. And yeah. It's like uh, it's like card games back in the 90s. You remember when, God, when yes. Magic was really, you know, soaring and so everybody. I mean, there was like Harry Potter card games. Oh, and, there was a card game for everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. And so if you bought into all of that, uh-huh. a lot of that is a brick and mortar store mm-hmm. yeah there's Ouch. no recovery you know you look at anders with his last chance to buy shelf i mean yeah that's it's a great way to go oh you know you better get it now before it leaves but really he boxes it up and sends it back yeah he doesn't, he doesn't have, have to, have eat, to that. eat that yep so and there's no penalty for not selling it because there's a reason it's on the last yeah. chance they know it's not moving in the retail stores yep. so they bring it to the warehouse so they can send it where it needs to go yeah, it's so much easier for him. But, you know, I mean, the other, the flip side of that is, is you have to spend your days being a teacher, being, showing people how to paint, showing people how to play games, doing the demos, getting ready for the demos. Yeah. So, I mean, it, there's a good and the bad, I think. It's basically, it's retail, right? It like, is. It is. And anybody who's worked in easy. retail knows that, like, you're going to de- deal with 10 people. Eight of them are just going to be worthless. Yeah. One will be okay. And then, one will really make your day. Yeah. You know, they'll say something nice or whatever. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's generally how or retail buy works. product. Yeah. Yeah. Or buy something. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, that's my favorite thing is the guys that go in there and they look at all the stuff. And then they immediately use his Wi-Fi to get on to one of the mail order places to buy it. Sure. And I'm just like, punch you in 20% the face. 20% off. Yeah. Punch you in the face. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How did this become new? Dog? I don't know. I wow, you know, without know. Chad here, we do go off the rails. Yeah, we do. It's all right. Though. I'm not saying he's can, needed. We but... can tangent every once in a while. That's right. So yeah, the big pre-orders are Seraphon, 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 and there's a getting started or a start collecting Skinks box. Yeah, this which is a pretty bongo deal. Yeah, you buy like two of these and two of the Seraphon ones, and, and... you're set for anything. I mean, well, yeah, those a Slon. Yeah, you'll need an a An engine of the gods. Probably an astrolith bearer. Yeah. Yeah, an engine of the gods. Boom. I bet you could probably crank out a Seraphon army. Everything you'd need for less than 500 bucks. Probably, yeah. That's not bad at all. Yeah, it's making me... I'm looking forward to doing the breakdown of the Skinks, the Daughters of Cain, and the Gloomspite boxes to see how they fare on our spreadsheet of value yeah you See know what when that book in. drops in fact it'll be in hand next time we record yes we can uh do we can touch back on an old bit we did where we built lists and yeah stuff like that and try to incorporate as much as we can out of the get started boxes and yep. whatnot well we're going to do that today yeah we don't have the army book First no, I mean we're going to do that for us here at bone reapers remember? oh yeah yeah for bone yeah. reapers but uh you know definitely do it yeah for, It'll Seraphon. be definitely fun to do it for Seraphon to build an army right then and there. Sure. So, what else? that was kind of it for... Uh... Oh, and the Gloom Spike one was weird. That's a weird box. Like, 
three, you get three trolls. Yeah. 10 squigs and a loon boss. Yeah. I'm just, and somebody brought it up on the, on the age of Sigmar Facebook page. And they were like, that is a, that's random. That's a like, random. None of it box. synergizes at right. all. They don't work together. You yeah. can't build something. They can't even put a battle scroll or a war scroll in that box because they don't work together. Yeah. So, and the GW response was, is that sometimes the box isn't designed to be an army. Sometimes the box is just meant to be a, a, a leaping point. Yeah. You know, or, you or a way to add a bit to an army, which is fine for sure. But it's that and in the sisters, or the, I'm sorry, I always say sisters. Daughters of Cain. Daughters of Cain. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it's, let me. Let me make it very clear that I am very happy that those are available. Because anytime you can yeah. get a deal on models, it's it's always awesome. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, Daughters is not an easy army to collect. That's a very expensive army yeah, to go depending with. depending on how you want to build it. So yep. getting a little bit of a of a boost certainly helps. And Gloom Spike can definitely be an investment as well, depending on how you want to do it. And the stuff in those boxes is totally useful. Oh, yeah. They're just odd. I guess we just got so accustomed to being like, okay, well, this box, if I buy one or two of them, it's a perfect starting point to add one or two other yeah. things, and boom, I got an army. You're not going to do that with that Gloom Spite box. Nope. So, and I maybe that's just more of an indictment of the army book instead of the start collecting box. I, I kind of think so. It's more of how they don't synergize in the same book. Yeah. Then, you know, because actually, honestly, with a few keyword variations – that book could be very, sure. very fun. You know, I, and, and Russ brought it up on, Russ Field brought it up on the latest episode of Face Hammer, where they were talking about how really, really good Orc War Clans and uh, Ogre Maw Tribes are, and how they took essentially two books and put them in one. You know, you got Iron Jaws and Bone Splitters put together in one book, and then yep. you got the Gut Busters and beast claw raiders and put him into a book and they synergize really well you can build purely iron jaws or right. purely beast claw raiders it still works well yeah. you can intermix them and they work fantastic together whereas gloom spite does not do that doesn't do that all. yeah the, there's no real way to blend all that stuff together and make it work i mean i know that some people will build like a grot army yeah and then maybe take like a big block of trolls just to have that uh Oops. anvil in yeah. their army <laughs> And it, and that can work, but you don't see them slotting in spiders. You don't really see them slotting in squigs either, unless they do an all squig army. Yeah. Uh, and he he mentioned like it's an organic process, you know. And they had an idea with Gloom Spite, didn't quite pan out. But a year and a half later, that idea continued with Orc War Clans and Ogre Maw Tribes, and it's, yep. and they perfected it. And it, right, those are two of some of the best books they've ever done. Yeah. So, you know. I think what they could do, and I mentioned this in one of the WhatsApp chats, of the new White Dwarf has a couple War Scroll Battalions for Iron Jaws. Yep. And they're really good. Yes, they uh, are. I think they're totally playable, and I would like to get test them out. And that's maybe something they could do for Gloom Spite. Spite. You know, yeah. in, a, in a few editions down the road of a White Dwarf, maybe come back and knock out two or three or four War Scroll Battalions that maybe help synergize that army a bit yep. more and bring people's collections together, which is what those books are supposed to do. I just, I, I wonder if they couldn't just make a keyword and I don't know what it would be. Gloom spite. Maybe. Yeah. Gloom <laughs> spite. And just say, add this to every war scroll. Well, they already have it. It's the abilities that yeah. are so specific. They are very specific to the different forces. And that's what's really, I mean, yeah, they'd have to do a pretty major rewrite. I mean, like the Nurgle stuff. It says it, it doesn't matter if it's Nurgle demons or it's Nurgle Rotbringers. Rotbringers. Or, it says target Nurgle. It says target Nurgle. You know, same thing yeah. with Zinch. Doesn't matter if it's Arcanite or if it's demons. You know, it's. I mean, there are some specific stuff in there, but there's a lot of stuff that just targets Zinch too. Sure. So, yeah. why not have something that just targets Gloom Spite? Yeah, and you know, start seeing some weirder armies and then again there's also the point that maybe they don't want that maybe they looked at it and said there's too many synergies in here that would make it too powerful or too crazy 
Yeah, well, I, I mean, you know, you say that, but then look at Cities of Sigmar. It has yeah. probably twice as many War Scrolls, and it all synergizes. And there's still, I mean, we're still unlocking builds in that thing. There's sure. still new things you see. That That is one of the few WhatsApp groups I've seen that has maintained a level of incredible just number of posts every day. Oh. I mean, a lot of them go up and down as the book comes out, yeah. and then... It tapers off and somebody wins a leave. tournament with it. Or yeah. Like the, right now, the odd enough Deepkin one is firing yes, on all fired, cylinders. Yeah. It's been pretty quiet for a while. Yeah. And then, but the the Free Cities, Yeah, it's like there's thousands of builds in that book that are all viable. Sure. And Gloom Spike could be that. I, I think it just needs a little bit of tweaking here and there. Yeah. So some keyword changes and some, like you said, the spell effect and the ability effects just need to be tweaked yeah so that there's a little more synergy all right so we can go into creation we've both been hobbying significantly yes we have which is new for me and yeah it's it's actually quite refreshing that we did this yeah yeah so what have you been up to well i like you said at the top i finished up my you Bloodthirster. cranked out a full-on Bloodthirster of Unfettered Rage? Yes. Yeah, the, the double-handed axe. Yeah, he's kind of angry. Yeah, yeah. he's so good. He's mostly angry because he's on fire. Yeah, so. I would imagine that yeah. has something to do with yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. So he was a blast to paint. It was so much fun. And I was trying techniques that I had only thought of and read about in the past. And yeah. I said, you know what? You got to try it sometime. You can't just sit there and read a book about it. And so I did it. And it was fun. Yeah. He's getting pretty decent reviews. Yeah. So I like him. Good. I like him. I'm waiting for you to do a whole army like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, though, you know, this one took two weeks because I only got a few nights at it. Mm-hmm. But if I just sat down, yeah, that's not that hard of a scheme to do. It really isn't because a lot of the base is all airbrush, mm-hmm. you know, to get the, the fire effect. And then after that, it's it's like anything else. You pick out the details with the brush. So, so the next bit you're going to challenge yourself is 10 blood letters? See no. If you can replicate it on 10 blood letters? Well, I, I guess I could try. They'd be easy to do. Yeah. So, but my next thing is the broadside. Yeah, bag. yeah, the blind so, bag. Well, actually, no. I have to do a unit for the store challenge. Oh, yeah. And then, but that's going to be my Blight Kings over there. Oh. Then I got to knock out my ogres. Yeah. And then, of course, I may or may not end up building that Osiric Bone Reaper army over the next several weeks, depending on how this lore segment goes and how good the Seraphon book is. Oh, yeah. Let's not lie, because yeah. when that book drops, if it's even reasonably fun to play, and I don't mean strong, I mean fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think everything will go on hold for that. Fair enough. And I will continue to shoot myself in the face for just buying into the Bone Reapers like I did, knowing that book was coming. No, I think you'd be fine, man, because the Bone Reapers, they look cool. They have a very unique play style. Yes, yes. And as much as you love Seraphon, you're also a big death player. I'm big time death, yeah. So, yeah, you'll come you'll come around back to them, especially, you know, what you could do, because you were talking about how you're going to need to strip your Seraphon, and you want to do the whole thing in contrast. Yeah. Because yeah. you could crank out a Seraphon army pretty, pretty quickly. Pretty quick, yeah. What you could do is contrast the Seraphon mm-hmm. to get them out there and then take a little time on the, the Bone Reapers. Yeah. And don't pressure yourself to put the table. Yeah, because I have armies to play. Exactly. So that could be your army that you're just like, I want to want to challenge myself to do some cool techniques and, yeah. and do this like yeah. above tabletop. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. I think do that, do something like that. and Have the, the Bone Reapers a, as a real project army. Yeah. I have a lot of painted Seraphon. I mean, I can feel an army right now. Sure. So whether or not it's good in the new book well, remains you know, to be seen. Again, how often do we play competitively? Exactly. We I usually don't. just screw yeah. around with fun games here. So, yeah. And I don't know what I'm taking to Nova. I don't know what I'm taking to any of the tournaments this year. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't I, even know what tournaments I'm going to this year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, pretty much. i got to start writing them down because there, there have been a couple that have cropped up here and there. I'm like, oh. Hey, that is on a weekend that I could go. Yep. I was talking to James, and his March is, because I'm running the event March 14th over at AI, and then the next weekend, he's got the event out in uh, Arizona that we're going to talk about later, 
And then he's got, he comes back and the next weekend is the 40 K event. So he's like jammed out for the, for the month. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh we've got, we've got events to do. I want to, I would like to try to get out to the Arizona event. I just, that's a horrible weekend. And I think that's a weekend you can't go. Yeah, I can't go yeah. either. So you won't be there, but I'd like to try to get out there. Definitely. Number one, it's Phoenix. So, you know. Yeah, it's only a six-hour drive. Yeah. Not well, bad. A little longer than that. Well, yeah, if you drive like you. Hmm? <clears throat> How about those Yankees? Yeah, oh, aren't they? How about those Astros? Oh, my God. <laughs> They're getting beaned every time they go up to the bat, getting booed. And it's only spring training, baby. I knew it was going to be bad. I had no idea it was going to be this bad in spring I, training. I am so happy. So happy that the fans and the other players yes. are not going to let this go. No, they're not. And, well, they shouldn't. Well, they should not. All right, well, so what else have you done? Have you – was it just the bloodthirster you focused that's on? All I, that's all I was focusing okay. on. But part of the focus on that is I kind of want to talk about the Army Painter wet palette. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. came yeah. out with – and I had the opportunity to play with uh, for the bloodthirster. And – um. I have to give this thing a really, really good review. It's it's really – it's a neat idea as to how to put together a wet palette. And, again, you can make a wet palette out of an old sandwich t- t- tub and some Scott Sp- towels and a piece of parchment paper. Well, I don't know about a Scott towel, but uh, parchment paper, yeah, yeah. and a sponge. And, oh. Yeah, a sponge make or Scott like towels underneath. 50. Yeah, you, you can slap one together that does the exact same thing. But as companies get into this idea of making better and better wet palettes, now you're getting the sponge material is naturally resistant to odors and mildew and mold, yep. which, you know, since you're sealing it up with water inside, that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, the Army life, Painter uh, one, finds a way. Yeah, life finds a way. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Goldblum. Yep. You are a smart feller. Um, the Army Painter is, uh, and I, I, I compare it to the red grass. Uh, ultimate no is the red grass the one that you let me use with the white it's the white plastic one no that's the masterson's oh okay yeah. then you'll no. have to show me the red grass the red grass one is the orange one the one with the orange top. oh yeah that one yeah. is nice yeah it's that very one is nice. nice um in fact of the two of them the red grass they have a studio version which is much much bigger quite a bit bigger but i have the regular painter version and it's just a little bit bigger than the army painter one and they both have the the pad that, you know, resists mold and mildew. They're both very, very similar. If I was to give one of them a nod, it would have to go out to the red grass one, and only because, and I'll say why late, here later. One of the nice touches of the Army Painter version is it's actually got three plastic pieces. It's got the bottom bin. It's got the lid, but it also has a tray. And inside the tray, you can put your brushes. Yeah, that's a really cool idea. So, yeah. And if you're traveling a lot and, you know, it has a big elastic band, you know, elastic uh, strap that you can use to keep it closed. So if you're traveling, you can just throw your brushes in there and you know they're going to be safe. It has actual little cutouts for the brushes, so they're not going to be smashing around. Mm -hmm. So as long as you have something to protect the tips, that's also how you're going to carry your brushes around. So that was a very good thing. The only thing that they missed on is that there's no rubber seal on the Army Painter palette. Yeah. And we live in a desert, so things dry out pretty quick. Yeah, they do. And again, the only reason I give the nod to the Redgrass Everlasting palette is because it does have a rubber seal that keeps it from evaporating. But they're both really good. I would You cannot go wrong with either one of them. So I really enjoyed using the Army Painter palette. It's it's a good thing, and it's cheaper too. It's, yeah, it's I think it's about half the price. Well, how so. much? So when you buy the red grass one, if you remember how much the retail is, how much is that? Um, and what does it come with in the box? So the red grass comes with same thing as the Army Painter. It comes with two foam pads mm-hmm. plus enough sheets to keep you painting for quite a while before you have to buy new ones. The red grass one comes with what they call a wavy palette, which is just basically a piece of plastic with indents in it for mixing paint or putting washes in, mm, yeah, and it yeah. magnetizes to it. So it's kind of nice. Uh, I it's not something I would go well that you have to buy it because of that. Yeah. Well, the the army painter one, 
is I think it's only twenty five. Retails at twenty four ninety nine, I believe. Right. I saw it at the store the other day. And yeah, it comes with two pads and fifty of the sheets. Yeah. That's a lot of sheets. It is. But if it does dry out a little faster, you might be burning through those sheets. You can but they usually... rejuvenate pretty well, right? If you add yeah. the water, I mean, it's not like you you lose the paper if it dries out. No, you you can re the pet that stuff. So you can re rehydrate it. Yeah, so. that's not that's not bad. Twenty five bucks for that, and I'm telling you, man, I now that I've started using that wet palette that you, you gave me, like it mm-hmm. makes a big difference. It does they really do? I just checked on Michigan Toy. I'm sorry, that's why I was a little bit oh, preoccupied, but. Uh, the Everlasting Wet Palette is 50 bucks. Yeah, so, so half the cost. Half the cost. Um, and the only downside being it doesn't have a rubber seal. So honestly, if you're on a budget, you're, the Army Painter is definitely the way to go. It is a little bit smaller, but I'm talking yeah. not enough smaller that you're going to go, well, crap. Right. You know. So, yeah, I, price-wise, you definitely – there. it's got a great feature set. I mean, what feature? It holds water and – paper Woo. <laughs> what and, uh, feature set honestly that the idea of being able to put your brush at your brush set in there mm-hmm. as well that's really cool it is it's really super handy so i yeah i like them both i like them both fair enough yep and last but not least in the creation segment guess what i want to talk about a book can i talk about a book sure okay so I recently picked up a book, and this is from – it's published in conjunction with uh, Ammo by Mig Jimenez. Great company. Ammo, uh, Mig is a great guy in the model building community and the model painting community. He's – and I'm talking, you know, historical models, fantasy models, that kind of thing. Sure. He's not known for miniature gaming so much as he is painting to a level that just – Wow. Golden Demon stuff all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. IPSC kind of winner sort of thing. And um, they have put out a book, and it's called Painting Secrets for Fantasy Figures. And it's reasonably new. It was out of stock, and it just came back in stock. And it's got the cast of characters that contributed to this book are some pretty amazing names. I'm not going to list them out here because most of them are European, Spanish painters yeah. but if you follow those high-end painters you you know the names and they break down and they do all these chapters in the book and they make it approachable to the miniature modeler okay so it's a great book on how to paint from our perspective of what we want to accomplish so they have a color theory chapter like every art book does but it's color theory in the miniature world how does that apply to what we're going to do Okay. Not how does color theory work for, you know, painting the, the Sistine is, Chapel. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. And because then it's, it, it's easy to look at like the color theory chart. Yeah. And be like, well, I don't, how is that going to work on a model? Yeah. How does though? that apply to me? If I'm supposed to use uh, like what is it, yellow and purple or something as opposing colors that you're yeah. supposed to use. Like, well, what part of this model would I make yellow and what part would I make purple? Yeah, I know what the complementary colors are. I know what triads are and all that stuff. How do I apply that to my model? Okay, and this book you helps know, break he, that down? They cover through that stuff oh. of, hey, you know, pick this palette for your your force, and it will look good because these colors work together. And then here's how to shade those different colors and warm them up and cool them down to actually make the shades. You don't have to use black for shades. You can actually use darker mixes of the base coat to be the shade and get the same effect sometimes you don't want to use null oil for your wash because it's way too it's way too harsh yeah so and it he, they cover the stuff in here they have special techniques for miniature painting then they go into faces like an old man and a boy and then they have how to paint a woman's face because there are different techniques involved how to paint different textures. So if you want something to look like it's linen versus denim, which actually is sort of silly now, isn't it? But how to paint the different textures, you know, what's, what's different about leather than say jeans or cloth. So they get into that and then they go into different creatures and what have you. And then the gallery at the end, it's a great, it's a great book for 
actual miniature figure type painters. Let me take a crack at this because I'm uh, very much a novice painter. So yep. maybe on the demographic there. Yeah, it's this is who they're aiming it at is us. You know, the people that paint miniatures for games, not, you know, and, and they're actually aiming it at, you know, golden demon quality stuff, how to get there. But it's also step by step enough that you can learn a lot even using contrast paints to how to put stuff together. So I will definitely leave a link to that book on both Amazon and Michigan Toy Soldier. Um, I've got nothing to do with Michigan Toy Soldier. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. It's just a, they are able to get stuff that I don't see on other stores, so that's why I use them. And let's take a quick pause before we get into battle. You don't want to talk about my hobby at all? That's cool. Oh, did you hobby? <laughs> All right, let's talk about your hobby because I completely forgot. <laughs> wow. You just got all hyped on your own juice there. Yeah. How about that Lord of Change? Tell us about it, will you? Oh, bless. So, actually, I've been doing quite a bit of hobby. Uh, primarily, I have been working on the Greater Demon Challenge that I threw down with you and Chad. And so I've been painting uh, Fate Weaver. And if I might say, doing an awesome job. That is, the wing, the blend on the wings is fantastic. The body is gorgeous. Yeah, I've just been following the book, and I use the book, the box art, and then I kind of tap into Duncan's video from GW on painting a, a uh, Lord of Change as yeah. well. So it's been slow going. He's a he's a big kit, yep, and he's God bless. He has so much detail, you know, like his knee, his right knee is a <laughs> whole bird face with a beak. And I know just stuff like that. You didn't, I didn't notice at first until I started going over it all with the paintbrush. I'm like, oh my god. And, you know, some of that stuff doesn't even pop out at you until you get a wash on there and you see the different definition yeah, levels. Exactly. And you're like, where was that? <laughs> exactly. And I, right now, like, it's kind of weird because I, I put a lot of work into them so far, and it's still so blue because I primed them with McCrag blue. Yep. And uh, I know that it's that's going to change once I start moving into the gold, the details, and then obviously I think the big one, and a lot of people – underestimate this or don't think about it or whatever is just the base because right now it's this big what is that a 110 mil base yeah of just blue because of the primer and so once that changes it'll it'll definitely oh it'll change the whole model yep so yeah i've been working on him i've been uh what else have i been he's looking great yeah i mean i he is looking really, really good. I just want him to pass the three foot test. That's all I care about. Uh, he's got that by now. So, my ultimate goal is to paint something well enough that uh, Anders is willing to put it in the, the the case at the store. In the case, nice. Yeah, so, nice. Uh, I've also so I had a Chaos Space Marine Army that I kind of picked up because I bought the Shadow Spear box mm-hmm. uh, for the Marines in it. And then I bought uh, a, a, one of the guys in our group that was getting out of the game had just a random assortment of Chaos Marines for a pretty pretty solid deal. So I picked him up, and then, you know, the idea was to paint him as Black Legion, yeah. get out on all that stuff. But that was, like, back burner. Yeah. So I found another buddy who uh, <laughs> who has Chaos, and he wanted more Chaos, and um, he had Astra Militarum for uh, trade. Oh. So I traded my Chaos Marines for... Astra Militarum, which uh, I'm much happier with. I used to have a, a pretty large guard army back in the day that yeah. I, I regret selling. So this allows me to get back on that train, as well as keeping it with the imperial soup of my Templars and sisters. Sure. So, but long story short, when I made that trade, I had to open my Shadow Spear box. Yes. To get the Chaos side out and so when i was done with that and i got back home after the trade i was sitting there looking at the sprues just sitting there i'm like man i don't want to just leave sprues lying around and make a mess <laughs> grab your clippers and grab your glue and start building some models <laughs> so yeah i've been building the uh nice. sh- the marine half of the shadow spear and hopefully i'm going to just keep that momentum going through all yep. of my i want to build my whole marine army because i got a couple of crusader army transport the gw cases the other day and yeah because i have these armies and no way to get them around so i I brought them home and i tried putting iron jaws in them at first and iron jaws do not work in those cases the art boys you know most of them have their weapons way above their heads so they don't they stick out too much 
So you have to lay them down. And when you lay them down, they just take up too much real estate too quickly. And then obviously there's no real way to put the, the mock crushes in there. Of yeah. Which I have three <laughs> mock well, crushes. Well, you can put them in there. I, I, I'll show you how I did my great and clean ones in that case. Well, yeah, I could put all three of them in there, but it, that's pretty much what would be in the case. In the Crusader? Yeah. Really? Because I put three great and clean ones and the rest of my Nurgle army in one. Really? Yeah. All right. You're going to have to show me how you did it because, okay. all right, well, yeah. maybe there's, well, I definitely know that the sisters and the Marines will fit in there perfectly. Oh, yeah. they That's almost, it's tailor-made for those kind of yeah. models. Same thing with know. my guard army. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's just kind of, I've just been doing that and I'm going to uh, get through the Marines and the sisters and meanwhile I'm painting painting on this guy and then obviously still plugging away on Randall's army, which is about as fun as mm. sticking my face in a wood chipper. But, <laughs> you know, what a great image. <laughs> no joy. Oh. No joy in that. It's a real punishment. You know, I mean, next game we're playing, I'm playing hard. Oh. I'm going to make that full paint. Oh some yeah. Models for me. Yeah. So I hear you. It's going down. I just got to get through this first. Yep, I hear you. So yeah, no, I've been uh, I've been doing hobby for the first time in years. That's a good thing though. Is you know I noticed through all these travails of you getting all these armies and making all these deals that you've been making. Yeah. When all is said and done, you're ending up filtering back to what you've always done. Yeah. Which is orcs and guard and you know orcs, guard, and templars mm-hmm. for four yeah. K, and See, then on the fantasy side, dwarves. Yeah. Corn and uh, elves. Yeah. So yep. as long as I got those, I'll be good. I hate to say it, but you kind of, when you're getting back into the habit of building and painting and doing all that stuff, it's good to actually be in a place that you already know. Yeah. And you know what the results are going to look like. Whereas, you know, if you're painting like the Lord of Change, you've probably pretty much never painted one of those before. Nope. And so, you know, this is all new to you. And so you're, it's fun, but... It's still one of those things you'll be able to knock out a guard army probably a lot quicker because you know what the end result is going to look like. Yeah, you know? especially after looking at Josh's army today. Yeah. Oh, His God. contrast. All contrast. And it's beautiful. Yeah. 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 yeah that definitely passes the three foot away test of having a very nice, detailed, coherent army on the table. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. I'll be I'll be stealing that idea real quick. When you actually see it, that somebody did this and... It looks that good. That's the promise of contrast paints right there. Yep. Is, you know, like he said, doing a unit of 10 guardsmen in an hour, batch painting. In a night, you can knock out, you know, two or three units in the course of a week or two. You can knock an army out. Yep. So, and then spend your time on the Lehman Rosses and, you know, the bigger weapons and what have you. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's, it's not just that. It's, it's knocking out all the infantry. Yep. You know, the, the mass of it, you know, that a lot of people really just don't enjoy dealing with. Right. And now all of a sudden there's a way to really crank that out so you don't get bogged down on it anymore. Yeah. Because I kind of wish more of that, that army that I'm painting for Randall used more contrast instead of a bunch of metallics. Well, just give them contrast painted, you know. Oh, God. Now, that contrast yellow is gold. It looks awful. I'm sorry. That is not a good look. It's no. not a good army. So, <laughs> wow. I am so sorry. Ooh. Okay, I have uh, that was oh. uncalled for. Was it though? Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> sorry, I blew up. God, scampy, scampy. Right. <laughs> okay, sorry. Inside jokes yep. are terrible things to do on the radio. But there's like four people. They're gonna laugh their butts off right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now are we done with uh, creation? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let us move on. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. We're going to take a quick break. <laughs> All right. And uh, then we'll be back with more stuff. So because the second time is always better than the first time, we're here with Tom Zeifel from This Mortal March, a GT going on in Arizona. And he's agreed to come on and tell us a little bit about the GT. So, hey, Tom, how you doing, sir? Good. Yourself? Ah, you know, it's Sunday. We're recording. How bad could it be? 
could be Monday, it could be working. That's a good point. Yeah. So at least we're not, and it's all better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so tell us about the GT. Yeah. So it's really one of the first big GTs in Arizona that at least is in a convention center. Uh, we are doing two day, five rounds, three on Saturday, two on Sunday. Um, we we're kind of trying to go all out for this. We'd like to make this an annual thing and make it bigger each year. Nice. Uh, we are sitting right around 30 to 32 players and we still have, you know, up to 40. So we'd like to hit that cap. That way we get to make fun of all the 40 guys across the uh, aisle. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll buy a ticket just to just help that out. <laughs> And this is going to take place on March 21st and 22nd? Correct. That weekend? Okay, that's cool. That's a good one. And as far as I can see on your website, uh, this is only 5 bucks to get into the actual tournament, tournament itself. Yeah. So your convention badge is $40, and then the the actual tournament is only $5 to enter. Wow, that's kind of really nice. And that's out there at the Mesa, did you say Mesa Convention, Convention Center? Center? Yep. Nice. So Mesa's so it's a on pretty the nice. east side. Yeah. yeah. Mesa's a pretty nice area. I like that. I like that area. Uh-huh. It, it's got the bars. And, I mean, you're only 45-minute drive down to Scottsdale where ASU is. So. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So this you is the first year for Age of Sigmar, but is it the first uh, first year for 40K as well? Uh, yes, I believe for this convention, this is the first time they've brought uh, both of these oh, in. Oh, well, then it's definitely a competition. Yeah, and if we can be bigger than them, there's nothing better. Right, <laughs> exactly, exactly. I like it. So you've already hit GT level, which is, that's really good for the folks that are looking for the ITC points. Yes. And, and if if we get enough people, there's a possibility we can fight for a little bit more table space. And, I mean, the ultimate goal is to have a great first year and then run into a major next year. Nice. Yeah, that would be awesome. That really would be cool. And Arizona is kind of one of those easy states to get to on the southwest side. Yeah, I mean, for us, it's only like, what, seven, eight-hour drive? So Straight drive, too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, but, I mean, you also have – Phoenix International, so you can fly in really easy. Like, most of those flights would be really cheap. Yeah, I know. It's wonderful. God, <laughs> I love that one. So, yeah, you pretty much got everything. You got the Mesa area, so I'm sure there's there's hotel information on the website? Yes, uh, under the uh, actual uh, convention site, there will be hotel information. Um, I know personally around there, there are a few different choices, all reasonably priced. Nice. And like I said, there, there'll be trophies, medals. We're doing first, second, third, renaissance, and best painted. Wow, that's a nice spread. Right? And like uh, Seraphon will not be, the new Seraphon book will not be used, right? More than likely it won't make the cut. Okay, because it'll drop a week before yeah. the event. Yeah, that's not quite enough time, especially we are kind of being a little strict on the List, um, we're actually planning on next week and going over lists. Okay, yeah, then definitely. Yeah. I'm not going to make that No, one. I wouldn't say. But just about anything else is valid since everything's actually been out there in the world for a while. Yeah. And being the Arizona meta, you're going to see a lot of slaves to darkness. <laughs> really? Is there a yes. lot of chaos out there? Uh, Yeah, that that's a huge one out in Arizona. Nice. Very nice. We tend to have a lot of death and chaos. Right on. That's a good thing. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I can't think of anything more to ask about. We've got kind of the, the bar thing covered, the hotels. Mm -hmm. Pretty much all books are good except Seraphon. And I will put the I'll put the website for the game fair up in the show notes so that people can get to that. Is there also a Facebook site for the GT itself or is it just Yes, uh, there is. Okay. There, well, there's an event calendar for it, but, yeah, there is a link that I sent you. Okay. Oh, yeah, you did. You sent that link. Okay, yeah. It, uh, so I'll put that out there in the show notes as well. Awesome. So, anything else you want to cover? Unless you guys want to talk about ogres. I mean, I can do that for days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's 
going to be a hard pass for me. <laughs> well, I only have six stone horns, so. Oh, okay. Well, that's hardly any. Yeah. Come on. I mean, I, I still have the other four thunder tusks. Jeez. <laughs> I love it. Or my 32 morn thing. Wow. That is many minis. That is impressive. I like that. That's just what's writing. The other stuff is even more. God. Jeez. 32 iron guts. Oh, my God. 56 bowls. I only have 24 lead belchers. Oh, that's hardly any. All things in moderation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you have any Six spare giants. butchers? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I have a bunch that I've actually converted. Wow. Yeah, see, that's what I'm having to do, too. I'm having to take and put one of the man-eaters and make it into a butcher. So The the secret weapon for that is yeah. uh, Re- Reaper Miniatures makes uh, hill ogres. Oh, yeah? They're in aprons already. Oh, wow. Huh. Interesting. So if you put the the ogre cleavers into their hands and put ogre heads on them, they are exactly the same size. Wow. They're just a little bit skinnier, so with some green stuffing, you could really actually put a gut on them. Nice. So that's the Reaper miniatures? Uh-huh. I'm going to have to check that out. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And then there's uh, Atlantis Miniatures. They actually came out with a female butcher with a cauldron that looks great. Oh. See, what I did was, like I said, I've got the uh, the female. Uh, the rolling pin? Yeah, with the one with the rolling pin. And um, I went to uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that. And in the dollhouse stuff, they had yeah, some pretty nice pots. Yeah. Mila put the belly onto it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm a little spoiled in my immediate group. We actually have a guy with a 3D printer, so he's printing out a bunch of cauldrons for me right now. <laughs> nice. How cool is that? Yeah, that's that was pretty much how I was looking at making my butcher was, you know, just doing that. So I'm going to have to well, take a look at that Reaper deal. Yeah, and then uh, if you have the if you have a, a spare giant kit, there is like a loincloth piece bit. Hmm. Uh, it works really well if you put it over the empty uh, belly plate of a normal ogre. Nilla put over it so the belly looks like it matches up. And right. then I just use jewelry chain to go around the neck. <laughs> and then, again, it's the, the, the cleaver and the knife and the, the ogre kit and perfect butcher. Nice. I like that. See? This was totally great to have you on. Totally <laughs> great. <laughs> like I said, you guys want to talk ogres. I, I've got like 35, yeah, like 35,000 points. Yeah, still. nice. You would not believe the dirty looks Elric is giving me. <laughs> you should see the ones I get when I play. I bet. No, I bet. <laughs> I literally have a game on next Tuesday where I got challenged. I'm like, okay, well, I'm bringing six stone horns. And they said, wow. Uh, That's awesome. Nice. <laughs> all right, cool. All right, so I'll post all the links in the show notes for the show. And uh, hopefully we can do you some good. And I want to just say good luck with everything out there. I hope it comes out smashing if I don't make it. So it, it should already be a good turnout. We're hoping to max out. And like I said, next year we're hoping to turn it into a major. So that would be great. Yeah, that right? would be awesome. We need more Southwest events. Well, just major alone in the Southwest that isn't in California would be amazing. Yeah, that yeah. that's yeah. Okay, I should I should mention <laughs> that. Yeah. In the Southwest, yeah. that is in California. So, yeah. At least in this state, you can bring your handgun and go shooting afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think if they know what that word means in California. Oh, wow. no, those are all four letter words. <laughs> oh, those poor people. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Thomas. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about that. And I appreciate you guys plugging this for me. Yeah, no problem. Man. All right. Thanks, guys. Welcome to the Rolling Bad Podcast, episode number 85, coming to you from the desolate wastelands of Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm your host, Elric, insert something ridiculous here, Edge, and with me today is, like, I, at this point I could just do it in my sleep, I just like to... I was going to say, I, I made a whole new intro for you, and you keep defaulting back. The there. old one's ingrained into my brain, I've been doing it for three freaking years. I love it. Yeah. I do love it. But we're not there anymore. We're here now. Okay. Fine. And here is our battle. 
So we have not, there's, I think 2020 has been a good year for us, Bill. Not only have we been hobbying, both yes. of us yes. have been hobbying. We've both been playing games. We have been gaming. Now, we haven't been playing Age of Sigmar, unfortunately. We will get into that uh, yes. eventually, one of these days. Soon. But we have been playing yes. games. And this is game, a good thing. And that game would be... Blackstone Fortress. Yeah, something we've wow. been talking about doing for a long time. Yep. We finally knuckled under. Yep, we have a Thursday game night now. Yep. We've done it for two weeks in a row, so we're on a streak. We're on a roll, and we're actually doing pretty good. Yeah, we are. So we're actually ready to face our first stronghold with only, what, we've only got two legacy cards, so we're only 10% of the way through, so... Yeah. I mean, I don't know how, how that is in the greater scheme of things. Cause, I have no clue. Yeah, but it seems like we're doing all right. Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day when we wrapped up our session, and I was like, this has been fairly easy. I yeah. don't feel like we've ever really been pushed, and, it, and there was like a panic moment. Not yet. I think the stronghold so, yeah, will probably change that. If, if something so. in the strong, if it's just so many encounters or... Yeah. Or or what? But uh, I don't know. I yeah, know. we've we've actually. I mean, we've had to plan our way through things, but we've actually ended up with good plans mm-hmm. that worked. Yeah, and with the exception of those spindle drones that kept reinforcing yeah. themselves. Yeah, <laughs> that one was. I mean, yeah. But even then, you know, we still managed to put them down pretty quickly and keep moving. So. Yeah. Well, I think part of that was. And this is this is crazy because I'm playing uh, Amelin Shadow Spear, the, the Eldari, Eldari sharpshooter. Yeah. And the very first discovery card that I pulled <laughs> yeah. was her, oh, by the way, you're inspired and you stay inspired card. Yep. Yep. yep, yep. So as long as I don't lose that, I'm I'm pretty and then we just got you Yeah, I'm playing the Rogue Trader. Dennis Drake. And I uh, rolled a successful die roll on my ship or whatever, yeah. which allowed me to pick what I wanted. Yeah. So I picked the artifact that keeps me inspired all the yeah. time, too. So, so and Pam is playing the Kroot sharpshooter. I forgot what his name is. Kervin. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> that guy. And uh, she doesn't, there is no card. There's no secret agenda for her. But her shtick is she doubles the number of wounds every time she rolls the Blackstone die to see right. if she gets an inspiration marker. So she inspires reasonably quickly if she could learn to roll dice better. So <laughs> Yeah, this last session was rough on the die rolls. Oh, man. We were rolling reinforcements like no tomorrow, and that's a one, two, or a three on a 20-sider. Yep. And then, yeah, we had some... A lot of blanks. Yeah, we had a lot, a lot of, blanks. of blanks came up. <laughs> so, although that one turn, I critted both of the yeah. spindle drones, which, pop, thank pop. God. Yeah, because they were at full power. Yeah, having so, them in our backfield would have been rough. Yeah, very. So I had one lucky turn of shooting. But again, inspired, I'm getting to roll two dice, keep the highest one. Right. So, yeah. Definitely that, helps. That was big. Yeah, and I had made the comment about... Playing this really makes me want to play Silver Tower, you know, but it's hard to want to play Silver Tower when it's there's nothing for it. It's yeah. just the base game, and yeah. they never did anything else. And it's like, whereas Blackstone Fortress just constantly gets yeah. these cool updates and there's, expansions and just I mean, so many things you could do with that game. Yeah, this latest White Dwarf has a big thing on how to take an Eversor Assassin. Yeah. Or a, is it Eversor or Kalexis? Uh, I think the, it's the Eversor. Eversor, yeah. yeah. And uh, how to take it through in a, in a solitaire thing. And it, I yeah. mean, content like that is what keeps a game vital and alive. And you don't see that for the Silver Tower and then, you know. Hammers under Hammer Hall. Hammer Hall thing. Or, yeah. Which is sad because those were really fun games. I mean, we played that game with Mark and Judy and, you know, our, our other friends. And um, we had a blast playing it. Everybody got it. It's a simple mechanic. Once you learn how it works, it's yeah. really easy. And we, we would go through a couple of a couple of challenges every night. Hmm. 
Yeah, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully something is in the works for. I hope so. I a, really re- a redo of the fantasy side because I mean that's where it originated, right? That's yeah, where War- it's Warhammer Quest is yep. is the fantasy part of it. So I mean, yeah, the mechanic started with Silver Tower, and then Shadows Over Hammer Hall kind of refined it a little bit, and then Blackstone Fortress came out, and I mean it completely tweaked. It's the same basic system. You roll activation dice. You have destiny dice. You make decisions about how you're going to do it as a group, and it just works. Yeah. And that's they need that for the Mortal Realms. Yep, a game like that could really be a good launching point. So yeah. there's that aspect of it, and then uh, the other thing that I see when I look at the game is you have all those Trader Guardsmen. No, oh. and it's like, when are we going to get some new? Astra Militara models, man. Those those look so good. Those Trader Guardsmen in there are so... You know, and then you have all the Chaos Cultists, too, for Chaos Space Marines. It's like, man, they, they're capable of doing some really good-looking human yeah. 40K models. Why can't we get that ported over to the over to the Imperial side? Yep. I mean, they really... It's funny because you look... I hear all these stories of all around the world... People buying the Blackstone Fortress Servants of the Abyss box. Oh, yeah. Because they want the Trader Guardsmen. Mm-hmm. That's it. They don't want anything else, just the Trader Guardsmen from that. And they'll buy two and three and four to make units of them because they're such great models. Yep. And yet, Andrews has two Servants of the Abyss box on his, I have to ship back to the warehouse because it's not selling. So it's just not a thing here, I guess, Trader yeah. Guardsmen. So. I I was gonna get it when I when I was gonna do my Chaos Space Marine Army. Mm-hmm. I was definitely gonna buy up all kinds of different random Trader Guard type things for cultists, but yeah. that's not in the works anymore. So, nope. you know, and I, I got to thinking about it. I was like the other day, you really only need three kits, right? There's a infantry squad, a command squad, and a heavy weapon squad, right? So you could do like three sets of three. You could do like a a great coat set because great coat yep. guardsmen always sell oh yeah it's always popular uh you could do a more vietnam era catechin style mm-hmm. but updated yeah because you know, those models are dated bad yeah and then you could do <laughs> like kind of, you know cadians are kind of like a modern day look but you could make a, a slightly more advanced yeah you know obviously you don't want to get too clean sci-fi that doesn't really fit too no. well with 40k but you could you could do a more advanced look yeah. of ig and then uh if you're real slick with it i was telling the guys at the store you do kind of what they did with sisters of battle and you have the different sisters kits and you know like you have your your regular sisters and then the uh, like the heavy weapons ones and all that NTN. and they they're like all interchangeable the yeah. poses and arms and stuff like that all work throughout the kit yeah so you do that with these three so it's nine boxes okay to reinvigorate an entire one of the most iconic lines yes. <laughs> in the game and then make them so they're interchangeable too so you could even kit bash amongst just i mean to me that seems yeah. like something it's almost a got to have yeah you know? yeah i mean cadians are flipping old i remember when they came out and it was like wow these things are amazing and that was their heads are bigger than their chest yeah Yay. yeah their hands are the size of their chest that's yeah. a bit much you know and yeah i don't know but yeah, I mean it's that's definitely a line that could use a major overhaul, and I'm sure they're doing it. it. It's not a if we see it, I'm pretty sure they see it. So, well, yeah, it's like they said at LVO when mm-hmm. the guy was like, "I can just say yes to every one of your questions yeah. because at some point, yeah, no we're time. working on it. Yes. Whether or not it's going to come out in the next several years, we don't know. But I've seen guys working on all this stuff you're asking about. <laughs> I just can't give you any info <laughs> yeah. because. We yeah. don't know. But yes, the answer is yes. Yeah. You will get a new insert model here. Eventually. So, yeah. So. But yeah, so we've been we've been kicking it in Blackstone. We've been enjoying it. It's been fun. <sighs> yeah. It's been definitely interesting. We have uh we have three players. We were supposed to have four, but one of them <laughs> wah, wah. Wah, wah. So we have the rotating Thaddeus Vorn, yeah, who is the, the flamer. flamer from <laughs> oh, L. Man. He's God. so good. 
he has this ability, which is so handy, uh, to put on a four up on a you know a roll of a four up, he can put two inferno markers out, which the bad guys either have to go through or go around. Yeah. And if they go through it, it it's potential pain. So, yeah, he's super handy for sealing off areas that we can't cover with just ourselves. Yep. There's challenges in this. I can't wait. You know, Thursday we should be doing the stronghold. It's going to be and good. see how that plays out. I mean, yeah, because you're right. We've kind of, these first two challenges have been pretty reasonably easy. Yeah. We've made our way through. But, oh, I, I've heard the strongholds are tough. Yeah. Tough. Should be good. Ah, I'm looking forward to it. So that is our battle for now, but our battle also kind of dovetails right into our lore segment, which today, and today only, we're going to title this portion of our lore segment, which is the only one for this show, Build Me an Army. Build me an army worthy of Quite literally, we're going to try to sit here and build me an army. Because I have a little convention coming up that we're all going to go to. It's known by many names, but we love to refer to it as RandyCon. <laughs> Randy Fast. Randy Fast. Smash Rant. Yeah. Yeah. Scampy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're going up there uh, toward the end of April. And I have decided, against my better judgment, to bring an OCR Bone Reapers army. Now, I don't want to. I don't want to blame the guys at Cubic Shenanigans for this, but I place the blame squarely on them. Uh, <laughs> well, because you know they've been they've both been playing it, and they make it sound so very appealing now. And if you listen to their show, you'll you'll get this from them too. OCR Bone Reapers is not just put the models on the table, go win games. It's there's you are playing an elite army and you have to make the right decisions. You have to make the right moves. You have to put yourself into positions where you can handle the double turns. You can't just make mistakes and expect to go, oh, well, I'll just, you know, come back from that. That's no big deal. And I'm I don't know if I'm that quality of a player. I certainly want to play that army at a decent level. Our restrictions are. I have a certain number of things that I've already purchased and our army list is only 1500 points for, for uh, Randy fest for leaders. I have purchased a uh, catacross himself. I have a mortis and soul Mason, Arc Kabalos Zentos, which can also build a liege Kabalos. I have Volk Mordian and Archon the black. Of course, I know I need to get some of the other leaders. They just don't carry them in the store. So I have to special order them. So, as far as units go, I have two boxes of the Murder Ponies, the Death Riders. I have two boxes of Mortec Guard, which I pretty much foresee myself as building 20 sword and board and 20 spear and board, probably, so that I can have two units of 10 and one unit of 20. The unit of 20 will have 10 spears and 10 swords so that the spears can reach over the top and do what Elric hates. I have a box of three stalkers. I have one harvester. And I have more more guests coming out the wazoo. So, because I have my old death army. And I have, right now, I have two more guest Archai and two more guest Harbingers built and painted. So, those will definitely probably find a home in the new army, I think, maybe, unless they're terrible. And, of course, I have the Bone Tide Nexus and the Box of Endless Spells, for which I'm reasonably sure that I'm going to end up using the uh, Nightmare Predator. So, Eric, what should, I, what, what should I put together? So, yeah, as far as the Legions go, what I kind of want to go with is either the Mortis Praetorians using Catacross as the leader, or I also kind of maybe want to do the Crematorians Legion. I know Petrifex is the one to go for for competitive, but I don't think that's what I want to bring to Smash Randy Con. Uh, I mean, Randy Fest. So I'm, I'm thinking of maybe a slightly less hate inducing list. Give me a second here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to whip out a 1500 list for you. Okay. To take specifically to a fun event where you're getting together with your buddies. Randy well, Fest. Here's what I want I want to focus on. The Death Riders. I like the the horses. I like the cavalry. So I really kind of want to do that. Want to have those in there. 
Of course, I'd like to have my Morgast in there, but I don't have to have them. I'd like to have the Stalkers and the Harvester. I don't necessarily need to have the Crawler in there. I do have a Crawler, by the way. I'm not really married to any of the the leaders, the heroes so far. I, I will take the ones that are most appropriate. And honestly, what I think is the Liege Cavalos for the Death Riders. Or what you can do. Hear me out. All right. Let's see if this all fits real quick. <laughs> He's on his phone working the Azir app faster than I can work it on my iPad. I feel somewhat, well, I'm older, put it that way. I guess you can't take the formation. That's the problem. So, all right, fine. We'll drop the battalion. Which uh, battalion were you going for? The Mortec Guard one. Oh, God, not that one, no. Why not? That one's like beat phase. What do you think I'm putting together over here, Bill? <laughs> oh, you're making a you'll have no friends at the end of this I'm weekend. I'm making list. you go up there and slap Randy right in his face <laughs> with. <laughs> that wasn't the goal. The Tell goal him, was... don't even look at me right now. <laughs> you have to you have to earn my respect, and right now it's embarrassing what you bring into the table. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I'm sending you up there to do, Bill. All right. Like nothing for a hundred points. I think I remember the base hammer guys complaining about that too. There's like nothing for a base hundred. It's no. all like a hundred just a touch over. Yep. Which makes it really difficult to build a list. All right. I here. can take endless spells too. Because the that nightmare predator is forty points. Boom. Got your list. All right, Bill. So I put together a quick fifteen hundred for you. To okay. Take out to smash to enjoy Randall's presence fest. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a themey narrative kind of this fun is. army. Right. You're going to have fun with this. Everybody's going to have fun with this. 1,500 <laughs> points. Okay. Now, I know you kind of want to do the that one sub-faction you were talking about. The crematorians? Or the... No, what's his name? Catacrosses. Yeah, the, boys, but more, this, the Praetorian. Yeah. yeah. This, this doesn't use Catacross. Okay. Oh. No, no cat across on this list. Unfortunately, we could make we could work on a cat across list if that's what you later. Feeling. But, but it, at a two thousand point, sure. I'm, I'm I'm spitting at a wall. So okay, gotcha. Okay. All right, so we're gonna you know your battle line. You got to have your three battle line. Right. You're, you still got to have three battle line at fifteen hundred. Right. Uh, we're gonna say yes. Okay, we're gonna say yes. So you got three units of more tech guard. Go figure. A ten, yeah. a ten, and a twenty. No, no, just three tens. Three tens. Just okay. three tens. You know that's nice and we're just teeny. checking boxes here. Sure. Uh, and then to to back up those guys, uh, to give them a little resiliency because they are fairly tough, but they're just three units of ten after all. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll put a more tech crawler with them. That's a cool looking model. I love that model. I'm yeah. jazzed to build it. Okay, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm hearing right. you. Are you picking up so what you're far? putting down? And then because it's OCR Bone Reapers and they got they got their own unique endless spells, mm -hmm. we're gonna add one of those. We're gonna take the the Bone Tithe Shrieker spell. Not the Predator. No. No. Well, we needed the points. we got to make points. Oh, I see. There's got to be a gap. Uh, and then we'll just add Nagash, you know. <laughs> Nagash on top of that. <laughs> so <Yeah>. no. <laughs> I mean, you have the model. It's not painted. Bill. No, he's not. Oh, well, you just slap him to get it together, Bill. You put together a Bloodthirster and painted it in like three days. You can do it in Nagash, right? And, uh Yeah. Just take that list. It's a small army. You don't have to worry about it taking up a lot of space to transport it up there. Wow. And uh, and I think the look on Randall's face when you put Nagash on the table at 1,500 points is it's gonna be... worth the price of admission, which to Randall <laughs> Fest is free. So, Oh, I do love it so... Wow. Wow. I mean, I'm, I'm an ideas guy here. You really. are certainly an idea guy. <laughs> yes. Oh, and you take it as Petrofix Elite because Nagash needs his two-up save. I forgot to I forgot to leave to work that one back in. <laughs> so basically what you did was started with the gash. Yeah. And then said And then tried to squeeze in a legal list around his <laughs> fat ass. <laughs> yeah, that's uh that's what we did. Uh so our segment on Build Me an Army has derailed. Wow. Um, All right. What did you have in mind? What kind of fluffy nonsense? I basically want to do, as far as the leaders go, I know for a fact I'm going to have our Cavalo Zantos because he's the cavalry leader. I don't know if I want to make him my general, though. If I take him, or no, Cavalo's Death Riders are battle line anyway in that yes. book, aren't they? Yes, they are. So I'm going to take two units of five, or do you think I should do one unit of ten? 
Well, you're going to have, are you, so you're going to have more tech guard then? Yes. Let me take a gander at their war scroll because when this book first came out, people talked about how good they were, but then they kind of just didn't really show up a lot in lists. Which one? The cavalry. Really? Well, because more tech guard are just so good. Yeah. You know, so. But see, that's the whole thing is, is like, like I said, I want to either make this the, the Legion, the Steliarch Lords, or perhaps the Crematorians, but I'm going for the Steliarch Lords, the, the Cavalry. I kind of wanted to have a Cavalry feel to it. Sure. Even though I'm only going to have 10 Death Riders, I will probably add more when I head up to the 2,000 point list, you know, 2,000 point area. I can't believe you fit Crawler in that list. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying. You're making noises over there. Why? Well, I just, I really honestly don't know this army that well. So I'm just kind of, this is my first time really cracking into this book. You sure you want to go Staliarch Lords? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's all right. I kind of like that Mortis Praetorians one better. But, but then I think you just go all Cav. Just really embrace the, the look and feel of it and then go... But I only got two boxes of Death Riders. Well, yeah, you couldn't possibly buy another one between now and the end of April, could you? Fine. I'm just saying. Ooh, I have a 1480 list here. Okay. Lay it on me. Okay, so you want to hear my list? Yeah. Okay, so my thought, that does not include Nick Ash. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my thought was to bring Arc Cavalo Zantos. Okay. He's for 220. He'll be my general. And I'll bring a Mortis and Soul Mason. Now keep in mind, this is not designed to go out and win big tournaments. This is to bring up to play a lot of Garage Hammer with my friends who won't be my friends anymore. Then I'm going to take a unit of two Morgast Harbingers because I like them. They're fast. They're cool. Then I was going to take three units of five Cavalos Death Riders. Because, okay. you know, if you're going to have Xantos as your boss, you might as well all be riding around doing stuff. By the way, the Legion's going to be Stelliarch Lord. Okay. Uh, then I would have a unit of 10 Mortec guards, sword and board guards, you know, to hold objectives and stuff. Then I would have a uh, Gothazar Harvester because it's such a cool looking model. <laughs> and um, because I had that left me at 1440, I threw in the Nightmare Predator as an endless spell to bring me up to 1480. Okay. So... It's kind of what I had in mind for that. It's not a list designed to win any highly competitive games. It is going to be fast. It's going to move around the table. You know, you're going to have the Mortec, or I'm sorry, the <laughs> Mortec, <laughs> the Morgast, who are going to be able to run around and do their 18-inch charge, rolling 3d6. And then you've got the three units of Death Riders. They'll be reasonably fast. The Mortec Guard will go out there and hold an objective or two. I don't know. What do you think? Because I could always take out one unit of Death Riders and add another unit of Guard to hold more objectives. Yeah, I mean, if you're going for a more balanced list. But then again, like, you make it sound like you kind of want to do that cavalry. Yeah. Bone Reaper thing. Yeah. So once you start sacrificing more horses for more foot dudes. I mean, they are battle line. So the, the horses are battle line. So I could actually get rid of the rest of the Mortec Guard. The only thing is, is I need something that will, I can set on an objective and just not be sad to leave it sitting there doing nothing. And yet knowing that it can do everything it needs to do without having to have a leader over there. Because the big problem with this list, as I see it, is there's only two leaders. Yeah. So I'm going to be starving for RDPs. Yeah, that's true. It almost makes me wonder if I should sacrifice the Mortec Guard in favor of another leader just to generate that extra RDP. Well, okay. I have a, I have a list for you here. Okay. It's themey. I guess you could use it as, it's not, it's not it doesn't have any gash. <laughs> I was going to say. There's no gash. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah, we'll use your Staliarch Lords. Okay. We'll go Arch Cavalos Xantos. Yeah. Put him as your general if you want or whatever. Uh, another Liege Cavalos so that you got another. Oh, wow. Leader. Okay. Arcan the Black. Oh. He's a mounted wizard. Yes, sir. Okay. He fits the theme. He's pretty, And he's pretty strong. And then four units of five Cavalos Death Riders. Wow. That's almost an entirely mounted army. Well, it, it is, is an, an entirely, entirely mounted, mounted army. army. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 23 models. Wow. 1,500 points on the dot. I mean, that 
uh, definitely embraces the theme. It would look awesome on the table. Sure would. You know. Wow. I'm liking that one. I'm liking that a lot. That's just two more boxes of horses because that's four units of horses, right? Yeah, four units of horses, the special, the two special characters, and then a, reg, a regular Cavalos. And Cavalos. So, yeah, so you have Arch Cavalos, Xantos, and yeah. then a regular Leech And then a Cavalos. regular Leech Cavalos. So, yeah, you have three characters. Yep, with and Arcan. Then, and, then and then the four units of... 20 Knights. That's even a small army. I mean, that's really, what, 27 models, I thought you said, or 23? 23 models, yeah. Wow. And then, yeah, to, to go from there to a regular army, another 500 points, even if you wanted to keep that theme, you could just, then you could start adding your guys you just said. The, the Mortec Guard or the Harbingers? The Harbingers. The you know, it keeps the speed going mm-hmm. and, you know, or another, or a wizard in there on, another wizard on foot, something like that, or a harvester. I mean, the harvesters aren't slow. No, they're not. So. So that, ooh, I'm kind of liking that. What I'm kind of, and the reason... So the Stellarc Lords, just in case anybody doesn't know, it's one of the legions that are in here. The base ability for the thing is Stellarc Lord units can run and charge in the same turn. Yep. So this is going to be a fast, hard-hitting army. Their command ability is rally back. So, oh, they have to be within six inches of a friendly Mortech Hecatope. So they won't really have access to that. But that one allows them to retreat and charge as long as it did not run in that turn. It's still, I mean, it's going to be fun. It's going to be kind of interesting. I think I'm digging on your idea. I really do. Well, you know, as far as those abilities go, it has a Mortec Hecatos in the unit. Each unit comes with one. It comes with a Hecatos, right? Yeah. So yeah. they can they can flee and charge. I know. I was I was thinking the Hecatos only came with the Mortec Guard. Oh, Sorry. No, no. Don't, don't quote me because I'm bad at this. <laughs> well, and even then, you since you have the two... Mounted characters, a special character and a regular Cavalos. So you could keep one next to each two units of knights, mm-hmm. you know, to, to yeah. help buff them up too. Yeah, I, I can see that they would almost naturally split themselves into two groups: one with the Liege and one with Xantos, and that would leave Arcan to do whatever he has to do. And honestly, he's going to be the spell part of that list. He's going to be the one trying to just ruin people's day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you could cast the uh, empowered. Natterite weapons mm-hmm. so that they're blowing up on fours on the charge. Or whatever. <laughs> I mean, there's no rend, but that's right. a lot of dice for sure. So, yep. you know, it's, uh, there's definitely, there's a lot of fun stuff you could do with this army. Cause that army would generate at least three, uh, relentless discipline points per turn for the heroes and each friendly liege add three. Of course, if Catacross is your general, but I don't have him yet. I mean, I have him, but I won't use him in this. Right. Oh, he would be the next add to that. Yeah, what is he, 440? He would be a drop-in. No, he's like... 500 on the dot. So he's... That would make your 2,000 plunk. points. <laughs> there you go. And 24 I, models. Yeah. Wow. There you go. I'm overtasked. All right. So I kind of have an army to bring up to Randy Fest now. I just have to order two more boxes of... Uh, yeah, because you have cavalry a, guys. Uh, um, an Arcan around here somewhere, don't you? Yeah, he's in one of my. Yeah, I have two or three Arcans. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say because he came with one of the. Oh, the old skeleton horde box. Yeah, came with the. Yeah. With, with that kit, which makes all yeah. three of them. So. so I have. Yeah, it's true. It does make all three. So I have a couple of Arcans I can make. The only thing I don't like about Arcan is he's a pain to paint when he's put together. Mm-hmm. But he's a pain to paint in sub assemblies. Because of the way he fits together. Yeah, so you kind of have to do... All kinda, three of those, the more... Te- more more Tarks. More Tarks, yeah. yeah. All three of those kits yeah. are off. With the horse, with all the heads inside the horses. It's cool. Yeah. It's, you kind of have to... They look good, though. I know they and they're do. they're done well. And honestly, with contrast, mm-hmm. use it with that skeleton horde contrast on the bone and then do... Like one of the greens that really glows on the skulls on the inside. I would just use the hex wraith flame. That too, you know, the regular yeah. green for the glowing, you thin that that you know, you make more tark mingles ectoplasm. Yeah. More tark mingle. <laughs> Tyler <laughs> Mangles. Yeah, there you go. You know, his ectoplasm makes those things look really good. Exactly. So, yep. So I have a list for Randy Fest. There you go. I'm glad we could work that out. See? This is what this segment is all about. Help someone who can't help themselves because they're just not bright enough. That would be me. Help me help you. 
help me help you. Yeah. No, I'm obvious. forward to doing it on next episode with uh, Seraphon. Well, that will go a little bit more in depth onto that one because it's not. That's going to be for generically winning games. Yeah. So because Seraphon is obviously what? this OBR list I'm making is just for this event and not. Maybe we'll just do a big old Seraphon review. Yeah. Because I know it's a book you're super psyched oh, for. Oh God, yes. A lot of people, a lot of dinosaur lovers are. I oh mean, yeah. It, it's one of those armies that. It's not one that like everybody has lying around kind of thing, but the people who have it, man, they they are they love their they love their dinos, and so the Seraphon chat on WhatsApp has literally been blowing up for the last month. Again, it's one of those where just the hype train has been full steam ahead, and it, it's actually fun to see what people are thinking. And some people go to extremes and other people reel them back toward reality. Yeah. 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 No, we're not going to be Zinch 2.0. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things I've kind of been talking about with some people is, uh, and I, and I always kind of talk about this is magic, you know, in the, in age of Sigmar is, uh, really strong because there's no, gamble to it right, right? there's, there's no, no downside to that. magic yep. and ga- in magic right now with zinch and with hollow heart yep. and there's a couple other culprits out there nagash you know doesn't doesn't suck with magic and no and whatnot magic is ramping up and now you have seraphon getting ready to drop and seraphon should be disgusting with magic, magic. should yeah. be they should be on par with Sir, with uh, Zinch in magic, and then you have the Illumineth, Lumineth Realm Lords, which are elves taught directly under the tutelage of the God of Light. The, yeah. you know who was a the most powerful elven wizard in the old world. So I would assume they will be no slouch with magic either. And it's one would hope. And the thing is, is what do you do if you're an army that like you have wizards? But they don't really get bonuses to cast and stuff like that. Like, do you even really bother bringing a wizard? Like, if you're Ideneth Deepkin, yeah, do you even bother bringing a wizard? I mean, when you're facing something that outspells you with one of their little spellcasters, yeah, you, you know, know you, and you don't really get bonuses. I mean, there's some armies like like Ma tribes. Ma tribes have some pretty strong magic if you focus down that road, right? But you're giving up a lot of points to do it. But it, in some cases, it's really worth it because, especially their magic is more instead of throwing mortal wounds at you of variable numbers. I'm just going to buff my army up and exponentially increase my damage output or yeah. debuff your army. And and back in old Warhammer Fantasy battles, that's how you won games, man, was buffing your stuff and debuffing the enemy, not throwing right. a fireball across the table. So that yeah. you know that's why their magic is strong and, and they have ways of manipulating their casting to get it really good too. And uh, you know, like Skaven and Gloom Gloom Spike can also kind of do it. You know, if you're an army that just doesn't really I'm trying to think, you know, daughters your middle of the road magic yeah or you just have that one wizard yeah and i was like oh maybe i'll take two of them to kind of it's like oh is there a point yeah i mean when when anything you do gets unbound yeah and i have no prayer of stopping your magic and the thing is like that would be fine right if as long as you had to worry about some kind of a gamble on the super powerful stuff you're about to throw around especially with endless spells too man well i mean i think we've covered that before but it is a i think it's a failure of the system that there yeah. is no downside to flinging spells like there's no tomorrow. Right. There isn't even anything. I mean, there literally should be something to casting that makes you think twice. Yeah. Because you know Teclis is going to cast magic. A uh, little. He's, he's, he has to be able to cast at least three spells yep. a turn. At least. The number of things now that can use magic freely and other people's magic freely. Yeah. I mean, with Arcan stealing spells and Nagash knowing everything on the board. Zinch and doing it Zinch too. just basically saying, Oh, you I unbound that, so now I know it. Mm-hmm. You don't. I mean, it's yeah, that's the other thing too. You're playing Zinch and all of a sudden you forget your spells. So yeah. Or the changeling cast hand dust back on your Nagash. Yeah. Oh <laughs> like, wah, wah. <laughs> isn't that just sweet Josh Dish? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, it's there is a problem in that there is no downside. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance that the spell doesn't go off. But there is nothing that says, 
I've always felt that if somebody unbinds a spell, the original caster should have to take a mortal wound for that, you know? Just yeah. make you at least think twice. Or, you know, if you roll doubles or if you roll snake eyes, your head explodes. Something, yeah, you know? Yeah. I mean, obviously not. You don't want to do that because that just becomes negative. But there's got, there should be a mechanic in there that makes it painful to screw up magic. Something. Some risk and reward instead of all reward. It's, yeah. Right now there's no downside. Which is sad. But anyways, yeah. There you go. There's a 1,500-point so, yeah, army I'm actually, army. And... I'm actually just building it in my copy of Azir right now so that I can remind myself what I have to go buy. Yep. And then next show we'll sink our teeth into dreams. Oh, you have no idea how excited that makes me. Yeah. I mean, this is oh, going to be so much fun. Did we have anything else we wanted to cover at the very end, or did we want to wrap a date it up? I think we are ready to wrap this one up. Yeah, I guess when we get back together next time, we'll have the, it'll, we'll record on Sunday, so we will have had all day Saturday to look at the Seraphon book, and we will talk about that book. I will let you know how I came on ordering all these uh, extra. Yeah. <laughs> Two more boxes of Death Riders. Which is what I wanted to avoid, but oh well. No biggie. Yeah, but so, imagine how cool it's going to look. Yeah, and imagine what happens when I change my mind and decide to go with a different list. So. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> there is that too. There is that. If you would like to get in touch with us, you can reach us at our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash Rolling Bad Podcast, all one word. Our Patreon page is at www.patreon.com slash Rolling Bad Podcast, again, all one word. The Twitter account for the show is at Rolling underscore Bad. And our individual Twitters are for me at Bill Castello, B-I-L-L-C-A-S-T-E-L-L-O. And for Elric, it's at Elric Edge, E-L-R-I-C-E-D-G-E. All of our guests on the show will have their contact information in that show's show notes. The music in the show is used courtesy of Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com and used under the Creative Commons license. The Rolling Bad podcast is protected under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Information for this license can be found at creativecommons.org. Stormcast are cool. Mike, check. Mike. Yeah. Mike? Who's Mike? Mike, check. Mike. Mike, where are you? Stormcast are cool. Oh, I'm starting to get peckish. Heckish, look at you go. Yeah, I know. Wow. Using all those big words. Need a need a power bar or something. <laughs> <laughs> you have a deep voice, don't you think? Uh I'm told I have a deep voice, but I don't think my voice is particularly deep. Well, it actually reacted to it, so yeah, I think you do. Oh so. well I mean I could talk in a higher octave if you want or not really. You have that very white voice. <laughs> very white, yeah. <clears throat> Especially now. A Stormcast are cool. All right. Oh, it almost sounds pretty good. What? Right about here instead of, you know, up on it like that. Yeah, you don't have to get on it. It's three to six inches, they say. So you should be able to measure that. <laughs> Is that what they say? <laughs> I'm sorry. I even hit record, so that no. was going in the bloopers. <clears throat> Stormcast are cool giggle every time they see a booby and you know okay. it, it's I like giggle every time i see a booby well okay so maybe you're that guy <laughs> <laughs> maybe i should start playing pokemon <laughs> <sighs> so when are we gonna open our own game store <laughs> i don't know the more i think about it we yeah. gotta get on there <laughs> this is really enticing i'm telling you God, i'm surprised more people don't do this <laughs> There's hot moms at those tournaments. Hey, there are. <laughs> I know. I know. It's scary sometimes. I was yeah. like. <laughs> Which you think would be a one-up for being a game store owner, right? You I know. see them. But then how many of those single moms bringing their kids in for a Pokemon tournament are like, you know, yeah. the guy that runs the local card shop is yeah. real hot. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. No, she's probably not. 
because, you know, my husband is an engineer and actually pays for me to sit <laughs> right. around the house all day. Yeah. Yeah. He's down the, He's down at the other end of the shop at the Define Fitness. Yeah. <laughs> getting shredded. <laughs> Whatever. So yeah, we'll never we'll never make it in that crowd. You know, <laughs> Stormcaster, cool creation. We want to talk about. I'm, we've both been hobbying. <laughs> what's off? Our what's off? Our hobby and our nuts off. <laughs> <I don't know>. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Let's go into creation. <laughs> Damn it.